What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and iOS 10 Beta 2 was released earlier today. So for the past four or five hours, I've been digging through it, tearing through internet forums, trying to find every single feature that's new in this new release. Now it's a pretty big one, about 500 megabytes on average between devices. It's available to every single device, and there are over 50 new changes, and some of them are pretty big. They make life easier, and I'm happy to share them all with you in this video. So to begin, unfortunately, the old ticker sound is back. This was the new one that came in iOS 10 originally. A nice and very subtle click. This is the one we're all used to that's back. So the old sound for the ticking is back. On the other hand, there is a new sound for the picker view when sliding between options. This is the current one in iOS 9, and this is the new one in iOS 10. So this beta brings that new sound that sounds like a combination lock being slid through very, very fast. So that's the new music app interface in iOS 10. It's nice, but a little unnecessarily big. You know, the buttons are just too big. While using a new feature in this iOS 10 beta 2, you can actually shrink that using the standard text size shrinker. So if we go ahead and bring it down to here, then go ahead and open up the music app in iOS 10 beta 2, you'll notice the interface is a little bit smaller, so you can get it looking a lot more tidy. When opening up folders in iOS 10 beta 2, the background is a little less translucent, so it's a little easier to distinguish the app icons. Now this one is a little hard to spot, but look carefully. The animation when opening up Siri is a little different. On iOS 10 beta 2 over here, it'll actually kind of zoom in a little bit and then fade, but on iOS 10 beta 1, it just fades in, so watch carefully. If you notice that, it does have a slightly different animation when opening and closing, just a little bit. Finally, a much welcome change is in the notification center. If you slide over, you can go into your Today Widgets view. So you don't have to go back, go to the home screen and then access it. It can be done from the notification center now in beta two. Labeling in the notification center has changed from missed to recent. Now on the bottom of the Today Widgets view, there is now a disclaimer for the Weather Channel information right there. Now 3D touching on a folder in iOS 10 beta two will give you a better, more comprehensive view of apps which which have notifications. So you can know which one has them right away, but right here, they're a little harder to read. And the widgets view is now much tidier as Apple made them variable height, so they can shrink and you can definitely see more. So look at this news article right here. It's much bigger, much wider here. It's very neat and you can certainly fit more information on the same page. Third-party widgets in iOS 10 beta 2 can now display full length instead of just having a little screenshot right there. By the way, I'm blocking it out because it has some of my personal info in it, but definitely more information in the third-party widgets. Rich notifications are now active on iOS 10 beta 2. This is before, this is after. So you can go ahead and respond in here and stay in this interface until you dismiss it. So definitely more diverse, basically the same feature as 3D Touch devices without the 3D Touch. I noticed that notifications open up much faster on beta 2, which is on the left. So here we go. You notice it was available to display much sooner. Notifications on non 3D touch devices have slightly altered options. So instead of reply, it's now view. So the control center text has been altered for AirPlay. It no longer just says AirPlay screen, just simple AirPlay on and off. Also for AirDrop, the option for off has been replaced with a receiving off. So you can go ahead and just disable receiving. And on the second page of the control center, the actual icons right here are slightly different. So they are now white for iPhones. For Apple TVs, they do look a little bit different. They've all been tweaked. I just can't show you all of them. And also the iconography for the home page in control center has been slightly altered as well. So it looks a little bit bolder and cleaner. The wallpaper page has been reorganized to make sure that the new one is now at the bottom, not out of place in the middle of everything, as you can see right there. New look for a 3D touch icon on health, the today view, which was changed previously even before, is now just a little calendar icon. And 3D touching on notes will give you a new toggle as well, which is a new checklist. And the filter icon in the mail application has been changed from a little funnel to somewhat of a weird funnel in a circle look. In the messages app, the app store for all these stickers has gone live. So you'll go ahead and be greeted with this where you can go ahead and download easily stickers from within the messages application. Also, there's a new tab for managing all downloaded stickers, which in here you'll find, you can go ahead and disable them from here. In Messages, Digital Touch now has a new interface. To access the colors, you now have to click over here and you'll be presented with the same menu that was default on iOS 10 Beta 1. 
But not only that, there's a new feature to go ahead and take a picture to add to Digital Touch, which you can then go ahead and draw on and send with a little personal touch to it. In iOS 10 Beta 2, you can now send Digital Touch or any animated message to another user, but it'll show up as a still. So it won't be animated, but at least it will send. It previously did not send at all in Beta 1. In Control Center, when 3D touching on either the clock or the flashlight app, there are now new icons on that toggle. Not only that, but in a flashlight, there are now renamed options. So instead of high intensity, it's low light and so on. In the medical ID section of the health app, there is now an option to go ahead and set up organ donation. So if you want to become a donor, you can do so easily from in here. Now, if your device has a hard time sending photo or video messages in the settings for messages, you can go ahead and enable low quality image mode, which will make it easier to send those messages that you usually have a hard time doing so. In iOS 10 beta 2, you can now remove the news app, which previously did not have that option in beta 1. Now, I know some people do have the feedback app, but in beta 2, it was now available to way more users. So that's why some of you guys are seeing this app now. In settings, the tab for home has a new icon. So instead of being a solid yellow, it's somewhat changed with a white background and just a little yellow house. Now, some of you guys after updating may have went into general looking for the auto lock settings to find that they are no longer there. This is probably one of my favorite changes because it's always belonged in display and brightness tab. Now it's here where it belongs. So you can go ahead and change the auto lock settings for the display from within the display settings. Now in accessibility, there is now a new option in the home button settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into there and on this one as well, just to show you there's a new rest finger to unlock. So you hold the home button and then it will unlock, not just by clicking it. Also in accessibility in the display accommodations, reduce white point when enabling it, there is now a percentage on the slider. So you can go ahead and see where you're at instead of just sliding it right here. And a lot of changes in Apple Music, so downloaded music has now been renamed to just downloads. Also playlists that have been downloaded have a new badge. So if I go ahead and go into this one, it'll say downloaded right there. On the now playing page in music, you can easily see where the music is being output to. For example, right here, Beat Solo Wireless, and I can change it from within the now playing page instead of having to go into control center and changing the output here. So the interface when 3D touching on a song is slightly different now because remove is now delete from library. Also, you do have the option to go ahead and play later to add to the queue instead of just playing next. So it'll play eventually. Very small change, but very welcome. So if your iCloud drive is not enabled from within the music settings and you try and download a song, for example, just like this, instead of asking you to go into the settings page in uh, iOS 10 beta one, it'll immediately allow you to turn on the setting from in here instead of doing it manually from in here. And there is now an immediate shuffle button available when browsing your library. So you can go ahead and go ahead and start playing songs right away with that shuffle option right here, which was previously not available. And in the For You page in Apple Music, if you start scrolling, the Connect page will be right here. So it simplifies the interface a little bit. It'll all be available, which previously was not in Beta 1. So very small change, but the lock on the lock screen is a lot smaller now in Beta 2. Also, it's now animated. So if I go ahead and unlock my device in Beta 1, it just disappears. On Beta 2, it slides over and says Unlocked. And in better detail, just like that. So it's gonna go ahead and say unlocked and you can click your home button and jump in. When opening up the clock application and going into stopwatch, the default face is the digital timer now instead of the older analog one and they've pretty much been swapped. And if you disable the bedtime feature in iOS 10 beta one, there's nothing here at all. Now it's just slightly grayed out. So when you enable it, it jumps to life. Holding the new tab icon in beta two will give you a new option to go ahead and open up a new tab. The home app has been slightly revamped. So instead of having three options, options right here. You just have two and up here, the interface is slightly different. In the settings for maps, there is now a new option to go ahead and show the parked car location on maps. But not only that, a user from 905 Mac pointed out that frequently visited locations now show up with a heart into the new maps application. And if you use the activity app with your Apple watch, you can go ahead and click on the route and it'll show you the mapped version of where you were going, which is really neat. This is taken from a Reddit user. On compatible iPads, of course, there is now the option to use split view in the app store.
or previously you could only use slide over, but now you can go ahead and split it up in half and it works. In the Apple Watch app on beta two, there is now a new featured complication page on the face gallery. And I can't show you this because I don't have it set up with my beta two device, but on the Apple Watch app, you now have an option to go ahead and toggle individual apps off for background app refresh to look just like this. So guys, that's just about it. I'm sure there are more, but I wanted to get you a very comprehensive look at iOS 10 beta two, and this is as close as I can get. So there are over 50 new features or changes in this latest beta. It's an awesome, awesome update. Cannot wait for beta three already. And as for stability, gotta say people are happy with it. It's fast, seems smooth. Beta two is certainly almost usable as a daily driver. So thanks so much for watching guys. Sorry for the late upload. Again, I wanted to include everything. Have a great day. Peace.